when we develop the Brahma Viharas, the one that gets the least explanation is empathetic joy. But it's important. It's just as important as the others. Our ability to be happy for other people, either seeing them enjoying the pleasures of their lives or seeing them doing things that will lead to, be, lead to happiness. We're not jealous of them. We're not resentful. We don't ask whether they deserve it. We just see that there are people doing good things or, or else receiving the results of having done good things, and we're happy for them. That helps develop our own relationship to our own happiness as well. Because if you have trouble feeling happy for other people, it's going to be hard to be, really be happy for your own happiness, your own pleasure. This may be one of the reasons why sometimes when you meet up with pleasure in the meditation, you pull back. It's a little bit too much, and you wonder if you can deserve it, if you can handle it. So if you find that that's a problem, ask yourself, have you spread thoughts of good, goodwill and compassion and empathetic joy to others? And focus especially on the empathetic joy. Because on the compassion, it's not a mind state that has to depend on other people's suffering. Empathetic joy is something that depends on other people's happiness, which is a good thing. I heard a Dharma teacher one time say that he didn't want to be born in a world where there was no suffering, because then he wouldn't be able to exercise his compassion. That's a very selfish thought. You need other people's suffering so you can feel good about your compassion. This is why when they talk about the various levels of concentration that can be gained through the Brahma Viharas, empathetic joy is higher than compassion, because your happiness here is dependent on other people's happiness. There's less of a feeling of a divide. That way, if you can partake of their happiness, you can be happy for their happiness, and you can be happy for your own happiness. And then you start thinking about well, what kind of happiness is better than this. Well, there's this happiness of harmlessness, there's the happiness of the higher levels of meditation, there's the happiness of awakening, which is the highest of all. Because that doesn't have to depend on anything at all. So if you find your meditation is getting dry, or if you find that you come up against some a state of well-being in the mind that you don't feel familiar with or you feel uncomfortable with, ask yourself, okay, are you comfortable with other people's happiness? Learn how to develop some thoughts of empathetic joy to balance out your Brahma Viharas and to develop your own attitude toward happiness. Again, it's not a question of whether somebody deserves to be happy or not. Karma takes care of that, but it's complex and many times we can't understand where it came from. But just remember, happiness is a good thing. The desire for happiness is nothing to be ashamed of, as long as you approach it with wisdom, realizing that you want a happiness that lasts, you want a happiness that's harmless. That desire is something the Buddha actually encourages. So to fine-tune your relationship to happiness, make sure that you're happy for other people's happiness, you're happy for the actions that cause happiness. Because that ability to appreciate this and to feel empathy for other people's happiness breaks down a lot of barriers in your mind between you and them and between you and your own happiness.